Well, here we are. It's Friday. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's been it's been busy around here this week. Been working on a bunch of things, and I took a little more. We took a little time off because we finally got some uh, weather. You could go out inside and not feel like you were in a convection oven. Uh, it was in the 70s this week. It's 86 today. It's warming back up again, but everything here is fine. And uh, as I mentioned a few weeks ago, we're working on a, a couple of uh, 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 sort of historic videos. And one of them is, is, is all gathered up now and will be put together. I thought I would get to it this week, but I didn't have the time uh, because of one thing and another around here. And uh, it's on the uh, Salem, Salem, Massachusetts, and the history, sort of a, a, an overview of the, the China trade, how it began, and, and it's sort of a deep dive into the life of Elias Haskett Derby, who was the guy who really got it going and uh, what he did in the uh, 18th century as far as trade goes and how it permeated through uh, the United States uh, and, and, and drew lots of uh, coastal United States cities into the China trade. Um, you know, Boston, Philadelphia, Rhode Island, uh, uh, down in the Carolinas, everywhere. And, but it all began in Salem, and it's, it's a pretty amazing history. And, and, and some, I, we learned a, a lot of things we didn't know, and I've lived here all my life. Uh, I, I grew up going to the Derby houses and um, visiting the museum in Salem and so forth and hearing about the Elias Haskett Derby and Richard Derby and the whole family. And uh, still things to learn, still things to learn. So it's pretty interesting. Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention was uh, this week we added um, a bunch of catalogs to the reference section. Um, uh, one of them um, we, we came across uh, while we were uh, getting ready to uh, uh, do this video on the derbies, and we came up with this terrific 16-page uh, book on the Grand Turk of uh, Salem, which was the name of one of his most famous ships, um, and uh, it, its life and what they did and so forth. And uh, there's also, uh, so there's, there's this book. This is a book on Yankai porcelains of the 18th century, which we, a, a pamphlet, uh, or, or a 20, it's a 27 page like a dissertation um, uh, that's absolutely excellent if you're interested in enamels and um, the enamels of the 18th century and how they came into being and how they were introduced it's a very good article um, it's worth reading it's more than an article it's, it's a fairly long story the other thing we added because people ask all the time that you know you want to look up symbols on things so we had these uh, files that we had uh, been sort of working our way through one of them is the handbook of Tibetan uh, Buddhist symbols by Robert Beer um, it's a pretty good book. It's 54 pages, has a lot of information in it, um, and uh, you can look things up in here to your heart's content. Uh, they, they did a nice job with it. It's indexed at the beginning, table of contents and all that. And the other thing we added was this, Popular Deities in Buddhist Studies. And it's sort of done like a cartoon book. It's done by the Buddha, Buddha Dharma Education Association, which is a religious group. But it's it's got good information in it, even though it's it's it doesn't illustrate much art. Um, they have drawings and, and line drawings and things. But it goes through all of it, uh, Buddhist images, who is Buddha, the, the Enlightenment. And uh, for those of you that want to be able to understand the symbols, um, this is a good way to do it. This book was published um, back in 1985, and it's, uh, we found a, a, a PDF file that we could we could pull down and convert into a flip book for everybody. So we said, yeah, let's do that. This is a, this is a good thing. It explains in layman's terms the, how Buddhism works, the history of it. It's worth looking at. It really is. And the last one we added, this is a big book. This is 420 pages. Dictionary of Chinese Symbols, The Hidden Symbols in Chinese Life and Thought. And um, it is absolutely uh, very well done. It's written by Wolfram Eberhard, um, um, and he did a lot of research on this book. It, uh, I, th I think you'll enjoy it if, you, if you're looking at symbols on, on plates and bowls. It's, it's, almost, it's not quite on the magnitude of the silver book uh, that we have on here, the one that has all the uh, Chinese silver um, uh, written by von Furst which is like the book on the topic. Uh, but this is also very good. I have to say it's off. It's awfully good. Um, and it was, it was published in London and New York and so forth. It's well illustrated. Uh, there's a good introduction explaining how to, how to use the book and so forth. So uh, if you're into that sort of thing and studying up, uh, it's, it's pretty great. Uh, and in here you can see these are all the pages with all the uh, all the different symbols on them and you can go through and you have something on a, an object a painting or a bronze or something you want to be able to look it up well now you can it's all in here uh, and it's page by page alphabetical order 
um, and so forth. Bamboo, baskets, bats, the whole bit, all of it. So um, um, you, 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 I think a lot of you will find that useful in your, in your endeavors. All right, and uh, uh, what happened uh, in sales this past week? There weren't many. Um, we've added a, a, a number of new sales to the global pages, and um, uh, the, the uh, we'll get to it in a minute. But the Christie's, the first of the Christie's sales, is online already. Uh, they haven't put up the catalog yet, so we can't do anything with that. But uh, we'll get to it. Now, this was these were the results from the Brunk sale down in Asheville. They had a sale just yesterday. And uh, it did pretty well, and there were some nice things in there. Uh, one of them was this uh, very nice Korean bowl um, inlaid uh, uh, with the white paste and white and black, uh, sold for eight hundred and fifty dollars, uh, uh, which I think is a pretty reasonable price. But I think the bargain of the Korean pieces, I'll show you in a second. Uh, the Kangxi, uh, the Kangxi Femi Ver ye ye yellow, uh, yellow ground. Uh, bowl uh, did very well. It was estimated. We talked about it a few weeks ago. A couple of people didn't think it was authentic. I think it's absolutely authentic. And uh, if it was sold by Peter Rosenberg, it's absolutely authentic. Um, that's all there is to it. And it went through Valen Galleries, which was Peter Rosenberg. He sold it for forty-five hundred dollars back then. He was a very good dealer. He was one of the best dealers on the Eastern United States. Uh, he and his wife Louise. I knew them well um, when we did business over the years. Um, it was this bowl um, that looks absolutely right as rain to me and apparently people went down and looked at it and they liked it too um, and uh, it went for seventy five hundred dollars all right now uh, this was another neat little lot this was an interesting lot it sold for sixteen hundred dollars got a very strong price but in it was this uh, nice piece of uh, uh, probably uh, early 19th century Beijing enamel and this uh, very nice pewter tea jar. They, these turn up every once in a while. These these export pewter tea jars from Swato. Love the form. Very classic form. And uh, and then this 18th century dish uh, done in and done in that pattern that many of you have seen from the 1780s. Uh, and and this lot did fantastically well. Um, sold for uh, uh, sixteen hundred dollars. Um, I, I I didn't think the estimate was was particularly strong on it. I thought I thought this, but I thought the lot was worth around maybe maybe uh, five to six hundred, five to seven hundred. Uh, but anyway, a lot of people loved it. Of course, the the enamel plate was very attractive. So there you go. All right, and uh, they had some rank badges. The rank badges were good quality. There were none that were extremely rare uh, that I could see, but uh, the, and overall they did pretty well. And they went for a price that if you're a dealer, you could probably buy them and sell them on, on eBay or somewhere else, break them up and make some money with them. Uh, like the, this pair sold for six fifty, and uh, I suspect that each one of them on on eBay would bring between four and five six hundred. So there's a little bit of a profit in that. Uh, this was the other Korean bowl that I, I think was the bargain of the day over at Bronx. Was this really nice lotus form cup? Um, this is a pretty rare form, and uh, I'm not sure why it went for so little. Um, uh, it, had, it, had, it looked like it might have had a little restoration on the rim, but uh, boy, this is a, an unusual form. It's incised, decorated, and inlaid with black and white uh, paste. Uh, nice looking little cup, absolutely authentic uh, from the Goyo period. Uh, very very nice it went for just seven hundred dollars that that was the bargain of the week and as far as uh, Bronx goes i think and then they did this nice uh, dragon panel silk silk remains strong this is kesey work here and uh, i think this was fairly reasonable i i uh, for kesey work for regular silk work 900 would be about right but this is kesey and uh, I think it, it should have brought a bit of a premium. It was most likely a late 18th century example, but beautifully done and went for just $900. That was a good purchase for someone. All right. And then, uh, oh, I wanted to talk about these. I got four people this week through the Identification Assistance Service, the one where we, you know, you can send in pictures of things you have and, you know, for 12 bucks, we'll tell you, we'll send you back a little video telling you, you know, going over the piece. And I had four inquiries. Um, uh, I had a couple before the sale and I had two since the sale from people wanting to know what the story was with these bronzes. They were estimated at twenty to 40,000 and they sold for 210,000. And uh, I'll, I'll tell, I'm going to say what I told everybody else. Uh, here they are. Um, the thing, the problem I had with these vases, I think they're copies and I think they're modern. And the reason is, is that one of them is a Jai Jing mark and one of them is a Chin Lung mark. They are both exactly the same size to, to the millimeter. 
and they have exactly the same decoration, but two different rain marks. One is has the Jai Jing rain mark at the bottom, uh, down here, and uh, the other one has the uh, Chin Lung mark. All right, and if, if anybody can explain how that's possible, I'd love to hear it. But I, my personal impression is that these, these, were, these were new copies. Um, they, it was funny because they, they, in, in a way, they looked very Japanese, um, which I thought was strange. Um, they're very reminiscent of Japanese bronzes made during the to Taisho period um, uh, and, and, and late Meiji period, but with different symbols. They didn't use the dragons in this form, but the, the shape and style seemed to be pretty, uh, pretty close to those. And they were, they were, they were sort of big. They were, um, what were they, 16 inches tall, and they weighed 43 pounds a piece and all this. They were acquired, it, but they were acquired in Japan. And um, um, as I said, uh, I, I said uh, I, they're modern, and they, you know, they, they look they look like they were made in Japan. They look Japanese to me, and I'm, I'm at a bit of a loss to understand uh, who the heck would buy them. Uh, this is the kind of thing that really uh, rattles me. I think if you go look them up, I did I did actually go and look these up to see if I could find something remotely close to them that had sold ever at any of the major auction houses or at the at the in the Sackler collection, Boston Museum. None of them. There's nothing like this in any of them. And um, um, given the fact that they're identical in height to the millimeter and exactly the same decoration, and they were both in the same sale at the same time. Um, that to me it makes them very very suspicious. Now, whether or not they actually sold for that is anybody's guess. I don't know um, what, what you know what the deal is on on this. Um, but uh, at any rate, that was my impression of it. For those of you that are wondering, because I know a lot of you saw these and were wondering what you know what the deal was and why were they authentic. And my opinion is no. I believe they're copies, and they and I believe they could have been made um, either in China or Japan. But the workmanship looks very Japanese to me, um, like it was done in a really slick bronze workshop. Um, and they don't show a picture of the bottoms, which makes me very suspicious. So at um, any rate, uh, good luck to them on that. Uh, now, uh, the other things I wanted to mention was the Christie sales coming up. There's, we're going to do a video on that. We've, we're getting the pictures laid out. Uh, nice looking uh, sale um, with a bunch of jades and bronzes and all kinds of material. Let me see here if we can get the, the page to load up. We'll be in good shape. Okay, and the sale are things like this. There's a, a very handsome pair of Guform jade vases, Chin Lung, Mark and Period, estimated at $180,000 to $250,000. Very unusual. I'm not sure I like the color that much. They look a little gray and ashy to me. Maybe in person they look different, but um, um, they're very rare form. And, and, and they're good size, they're about 11 inches tall. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, this, the Kengshi vase. Uh, this caught my eye. Um, I thought this was pretty terrific. This, they, they, don't, they, they haven't finished their catalog yet. It's still loading, I think, because there are no dimensions given for a number of the lots. They put in these videos, which is nice. But there's no there's no mention there's, they don't have that box down here in the corner that typically is there talking about provenance and the dimensions and you know all that other information. Often there'd be a paper little piece of you know a, a, a write up on the object. There's nothing. All it says is massive and superbly decorated Famille uh, Ver Romance of the Three Kingdoms Rouleau vase. And uh, judging by the proportions and and scale of the thing, the very vertical appearance of it, it looks like it might be one of these 34 to 36 inch jobs. And if it is, it's going to bring a lot of money. It's estimated two to three hundred thousand, which seems pretty low to me. If you think back to the, the this, it looks like something that was of a comparable quality to some of the things in the Jerry Tang collection. They had two sales a number of years ago. You may recall we we, we did a video on it, uh, and they did a book with it and all that. And it was, a, and I got to go look at the collection um, with the with the owner, uh, and it was quite amazing. It was, it was really wonderful. Nice people, nice family, and. Uh, um, this to me looks like it's in that quality of the kinds of things that you would find in that collection. Uh, it is absolutely wonderful, and I, I think it'll probably bring five to seven hundred thousand. I suspect, but it, with the with the market the way it is, who the heck knows anymore? Um, uh, it, it's a real uh, 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 a lot of turmoil out there, as we all know. And there's turmoil here in the states with one thing and another, and there's turmoil in Taiwan and China. The banking system is having a big problem over there. Um, uh, there's a lot going on, and, 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 I, and how it will. I think a lot of people in New York and Hong Kong, in the Chinese art market, are still holding their breath. 
um, wondering how this is going to impact things. Uh, but uh, this is this is a gem of a vase, and uh, for somebody who's prepared and has the wherewithal to buy it, um, I think they they got an opportunity here because you don't see this quality turn up very often in in massive size, especially if it is 36 or 40, you know, big, um, very very rare. So uh, worth looking at. And the other thing that's coming up is that there's the uh, Ann and Gordon um, um, uh, Getty auction coming up and there's a, they're doing I think 10 auctions um, and Getty passed away a couple of years ago but the images aren't all up yet but there is a section in there an online section for Chinese paintings pith paintings watercolors and I think some bronzes and things and then there's another section of the sale that's live that's got some two sections that are going to have Chinese things in them but there's a bunch of online stuff and you know they're selling um, you know couture stuff and all that who cares? Uh, but um, but you, there may be some terrific little Chinese paintings uh, that may be buyable uh, in the online version. So it's, it's it's certainly worth waiting for. That won't be until October. And when it comes along, we'll 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 talk about it. We'll 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 do a video. We'll preview that sale and preview the other Chinese sales that are coming up at Christie's. And uh, the Sotheby sale should be starting to appear within the next week or two online because they are sort of running on parallel schedules to uh, uh, Christie's in uh, Asia Week in New York. And this will all be around the Asia Week uh, phenomenon. And uh, Bonham's probably have a sale too. Um, and we'll, we'll take a look at all of it. All right, all right. Now, um, how did things go on at eBay last week? Because it's been pretty quiet over there uh, for the last uh, uh, couple of uh, months. Uh, just because everybody's on vacation and I think people are selling stuff in other places other than eBay. There's so many problems over there. But you can still use it. You can still sell on there and make a little bit of money. But uh, they, they've just announced again another sort of, some sort of uh, rate increase on something that they're doing uh, to try to, as we've talked about before, how they can, you know, just keep, without making the site any better, just keep squeezing people. So at any rate, there we are. But this was up, this was something Rufay's had up. It's had some, it's had condition issues, but I thought it was a very pretty vase. 19th century, it had a chip out of the top, it got a little damage to the base and so forth. But a nicely decorated 19th century vase, uh, very, very pretty, uh, could probably be restored. And it sold for a, a reasonable price. It sold for a reasonable enough price. If you decide to get it restored, you, you're okay, because it went for $394. All right, and this is over in the UK. And, uh, and then this, this was something that the uh, Shangri-La guys sold last week. I had it on the page because it's not especially old. It's Republic period, but beautifully decorated and fitted with a uh, later pewter lid. Probably the lid was probably added in Europe um, with this old box with it, but nicely decorated. A very, very pretty little uh, uh, jar, tea jar. Uh, very attractive. Um, there's a better shot of it. It's a little bigger, but uh, very good decoration. Really great decoration. And somebody picked this up, I think, for nothing. I think they got a great buy on it. $255. That was a bargain. That was an absolute bargain. If it had sold for 600 I would have said, yeah, it's pretty. It should, should sell for good money. And this, the, uh, the uh, Mei Ping, the miniature Mei Ping vase. This was only a, a very small vase, a couple of inches tall. You may recall a couple of weeks ago, there was another a small vase on uh, by the same seller, and it did very, very well. Um, he seems to have gotten, I think this is probably, it looks like he probably got a collection of small porcelains. There's the bottom of it. it looks 18th century to me. Um, this did pretty well. Ended up selling for $2,125. Little miniature red Lang Yao. Again, Mei Ping bases are a popular form. Monochromes are doing very, very well. And um, uh, 19th century stuff is doing very well. So I think that, that was sort of a confluence. They didn't really date it, I don't think, did they? Uh, they dated it as 1800 to 1849. I think it was a little older than that. And I think uh, the buyers thought so too because the price was pretty strong. But regardless, whether it's you know 1780 or 1820, it's a pretty little piece of porcelain. Very very nice in a rare form because of its size. And then this the the the, the plate that was marked as a Rockefeller plate. Uh, I don't consider this a Rockefeller pattern, but that's just me. Uh, very nicely decorated, beautiful enamels, um, and it did extremely well. It sold for twenty two hundred and thirty six dollars. Uh, a very very handsome thing. Uh, but not a huge surprise, just a very good quality. 
All right, and then over here to this, another one of the Wall of China, Kangxi period, uh, early 18th century. And someone picked this up, I think, reasonably. $206. This was from Stubsy Wubsy over in the UK. You've seen this pattern before. This pattern is in almost every book on Chinese export wares, early Chinese export wares. You see this played a lot. This is one of those iconic images. And uh, why it went for so little, I'm not quite sure. Uh, it looked to be in pretty good shape all the way around. Um, don't know why. I thought maybe this would have brought, you know, four, four or five hundred. So I think whoever got that got a great buy. And the shipping was cheap, $27 from there to here from Europe. And then this, this was, uh, I think, one of the bargains of the week. Um, uh, Kangxi uh, period, uh, Chinese Amari, terrible photographs. I think that may have hurt it. Um, very fuzzy, but uh, absolutely right as rain. Almost 14 inches in diameter. Big plate, big charger. Um, and, and it went for just $192. Don't know why. That was a heck of a buy. Heck of a good buy. And then over to this, this was that Kaki Amon pal uh, piece from Philip Covern um, over in, uh, in Belgium. Um, um, you should use a darker background because the, the poor plate got washed out against it. But sort of a Kaki Amon pattern with that very unusual branch uh, outer border um, uh, uh, above the Cavetto. Uh, with nice gilding, everything was intact on it. It was a very, very sort of a choice piece of porcelain, um, uh, 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 18th century, obviously. Uh, it went for $1,125. This wasn't an especially big plate, as I recall, right? It was like, um, um, well, it was 15 inches. That's pretty good size. I, I thought it might have been a little bit, I thought it was around 13. But still, a heck of a nice piece of porcelain and a, and a pretty good price for it. All right, and then hopping over to what's coming up on here, uh, there's this. Um, uh, this is a, a, a 33 centimeter, a little over a foot wide, Ming um, Celadon um, uh, uh, shaped rim, lotus rim uh, plate. Uh, this looks authentic to me. I think it's fine. Uh, the, the bottom of it looks good. Uh, it's got the measuring tape on there. Uh, let's see here. It's up to $138. Ought to bring $800 to $1,200 by the time it's done anyway. It's got a day to go. It closes tomorrow. If you like your old Celadons, this is one. I think this is one of them. Um, and it's a good size, 14 inches, right? So you might want to chase that one down. All right. And then uh, there's this, the, um, uh, uh, the, the Jade Kuan Yin. Uh, nice one, jadeite uh, standing, holding the branch with the, with her figure. Um, nice green striation in there. It's probably Republic period. Most of these are, but the quality of the jade looks good. The carving looks good, and miraculously, this doesn't appear to be broken. Look at that little little tiny thing there. It's not broken, um, which is amazing because those are always they always get broken. It's up to two hundred nine dollars. Ought to go for eight hundred to eight hundred to eleven hundred by the time it's all done at least. Uh, but nice quality, very, very good quality. Uh, and then on to this. Uh, this is a lot that just appeared, um, uh, that popped up. I, I don't know how we missed it last week. It's got one bid. Is a, a pair of early uh, Celadons. This is like a study group. These aren't really superb examples, but they're old examples. Um, Sung, Sung bowls, Sung Celadons. But these are provincial wares, ones that would have been mass produced and sold, you know, in, for, in China for domestic daily use or exported to Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Macau, Philippines, Indonesia, down in that part of the world. But a nice looking little group, nice looking little group. And um, it's up to just $170 with one bid, closes Sunday. Um, it's, it's, it's probably a six to $800 lot. Um, would be a very nice way to buy it uh, because there's some good, I think they're, they're, those are, look to be genuine examples. He's got some other things that are for sale that are very questionable, but those look fine. Um, and then onto this, the big Chinese silk embroidery. Uh, it's a wall hanging, 58 by 60 inches. Um, it's got one bid, closes in two days. I don't know why this isn't getting a lot more attention. This looks like a pretty good silk. Um, uh, made in China, probably done during around 1900. It could have been made earlier, and they just had to put the, the, the tag on there to export it as well. You can't always tell how old something is by the, um, by the fact that it's got a China stamp on it or a China mark, because especially on textiles, if they exported it after 1895, they have to put country of origin on here. But that looks like mid-19th century needlework to me. I don't think this, I don't think this is a republic piece of silk. 
Um, it would be rather unusual if it was. I think it's an older piece that they just put the tag on it to get it out of the country uh, back 100 years ago. All right, it's 58 by 60 inches. It's a shawl, uh, nice quality, one bit. It should, it should bring 700, six to 800 dollars, something like that. And it's just got one bid. I don't know who the seller is. Uh, they are located in, where are they located? McKee Rocks, Pennsylvania. All right. And um, that, that'll, that'll be on the uh, newsletter page this week. So check it out. Some other things we'll be adding. All right. So there's a lot going on. And uh, as I mentioned, the, uh, 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 the video on um, Elias Haskett Derby and the history of Salem and all that, we're going to try to finish that in the next couple of days. Got to sort of got dogged down and taking some time around here for the summer. Uh, and uh, that's about it. All right. Thanks so much for watching. Um, and thanks to you. A number of you uh, subscribed this week over to the global pages. Uh, as I say every week, that's that's how we pay for this site. OK. And if you support the site, and you support the YouTube channel. I hope you consider joining it. It's, it's a it's a buck a week and uh, um, it, it goes a long way to deferring the, uh, the, the the server costs. And we just had a software thing. Oh, the forum. Um, the forum was um, the image uploader on the forum wasn't working for about five days. And that was that was something we were doing here. We added some new security software to the site because we we take that pretty seriously, especially these days. And we are always updating and we updated some 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 fairly intense uh, protective software for users for their privacy. Uh, it, there hasn't been a problem, but we, we th this came up as an option. I said, yeah, go ahead and do it. And uh, as a result, it became a conflict to uploading images because that's one of the things that one of the ways you watch out for things on websites is a site. If you can upload an image to it, what else can you upload? They can seek out vulnerabilities that way. So we added this whole thing of, of security, which then affected the auto uploader for the um, um, forum page. That's basically what happened. I heard from a few people and um, we, we got the, the code written. Um, we had some people re redo the code on that so that it'll, it'll all work fine. They had to make some adjustments. It was a little complicated, but uh, it's back to normal. We tested it two or three days, four days ago, I think it was, and it worked fine. So um, um, for those of you that were wondering, that's what was going on. Um, uh, it was just, it was actually a security measure that we added um, to protect everybody because we don't want anybody getting, getting, you know, hassled. All right. All right. Um, thanks so much. Have a great weekend, everybody, and uh, we'll be back next week. We got a, we got at least one video, and we may it may try to get a video in on the Christie sale um, that's coming up. Um, if they put more a few more things up and get them live, then we'll 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 we'll, we'll, we'll put a, assemble it and build a video around it. Okay, all right. Thanks all to you. Um, thanks to you all, and uh, uh, we'll see you all soon. All right, bye bye.